today I will be showing you how I made this helmet. Helmet. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. Hello to all the cosplayers, creative and curious. My name is Geazaki and today I'll be showing you how I made this helmet for Reg from Made in Abyss. Made in Abyss is one of my favorite anime at the moment and Reg is just so damn adorable. I, I had to do it, like... He's so cute. <laughs> The design is a bit weird, I think, but that didn't stop me from doing it anyway. There were a few challenges here and there along the way, but I think in the end it turned out pretty well. If you like this video and would like to see the tutorial for the rest of the costume, it will be available for patrons who pledge up until the 30th of July. I will be explaining this a bit better further down in the video, so stay tuned if you're interested in that. Now, without any further ado, let's get started. Hex helmet is sort of a perfectly round half sphere, so I made the pattern for it on 3D Studio Max, opened this model on Peppercura and printed it out in the correct size for my head. Now this template is too complicated to trace onto foam just yet, so I put it together first, also to try out and check if it fits me right, and then cut it out in a more simple way. Now that we have the pattern, let's go through the materials I use for this helmet. EVA foam, I used high density foam, contact cement, an X-Acto blade, a heat gun, a rotary tool, clear resin, silicone, acrylic paint, clay, white glue, sandpaper and foam clay. The first step is to trace the pattern done previously onto the foam and cutting it out. Once that's done, glue it together with contact cement. Then it needs a bit of heat forming. I also cut a hole in the center here and sanded a clean bevel, but all that was covered by the gem afterwards, so all this work was not really necessary. <laughs> For this ring he has around the gem, I glued two foam rings together because one was not thick enough, cut the excess with my blade and then sanded bevel edges with my rotary tool. For this detail all around, I cut a long strip and also trimmed the excess before sanding. Side note here, it is important to cut a bit out before sanding because everything we're cutting is less dust that we are sanding. The tips of this strip were cut at an angle so it sits nicely on top of the ring. Now, to move forward, we need the gem, because it goes underneath the foam details we're making, so let's do that. First, we need an original to take the mold from. To make it, I used dust clay. I like this because it's an air-dry clay and it's easily sandable. I covered it in white glue to make it smoother and proceeded to make the mold with this dumb silicone. <laughs> to make molds, you need to make a little cozy box for the silicone to go in. I did this with a base of wood and a wall of EVA foam and hot glue to make sure I cover all the little holes. This can be done with any materials, as long as there are no leaks, you're good. I wish I could have used a different silicone, but the one I wanted was out of stock in the store I used, so I ordered this thing instead. I don't like it, it's too wobbly and the results came out terrible. You'll see what I mean in a minute. This was painful to remove, because the silicone infiltrated under the pieces and I had to remove the mold without ruining the entire thing. Granted, this was my fault, because I didn't glue them to the surface properly. When I saw how this turned out, I was horrified. Air bubbles all over the place. The other two pieces in this mold came out fine. The difference between the originals was that I sanded the other two a bit, and not this one, so this was a little more polished. Anyway, the mold looks bad, but the cast looks even worse. And this was a pain to fix. I sanded it until I got rid of these obvious huge bubbles, and then sanded down with thinner and thinner sandpaper. My initial idea was to polish with sandpaper, but I was running out of time, so I cheated and sprayed a layer of varnish instead, and it has a polished effect that looks just fine. 
I don't have resin dye, so I just painted with violet acrylics in the back and called it a day. Now, because I used acrylics, I cannot use LEDs because it would look absolutely terrible. If you would like to see part 2 of this tutorial, I'll show you how I made the remaining props and the shorts. Make sure to pledge for the video tier on my Patreon until the 30th of July. If you miss it, you can still pledge for the God of Time tier anytime or check my store envy for the written PDF instead. On Patreon I also offer prints, wallpapers, fan signs, exclusive work in progress and early content. All links in the description. Also, I'd like to take this time to thank my current patrons who have been supporting me. Thank you so much for believing in my work and your generosity for actually donating. You guys are awesome. It's time to make the little horns. I had the unfortunate idea of using foam clay. Now, I know this is a very popular material amongst cosplayers, but quite frankly, I, I don't like it. The first horn went fine, but the second was a huge nightmare to sculpt. It took me one hour and three tries, and I was still not satisfied with it. I don't have footage for this because my camera ran out of battery, so sorry for that. Now, I have several problems with this material. First, it starts drying while sculpting and there is nothing you can do about it. Yeah, they'll tell you you can use water, but you can't. It will only make it worse. Also, it takes forever to dry inside. I left it to dry for two days and the core was still moist. It was full of wrinkles I could not for the life of me get rid of, so yeah, now now I have two buckets of this thing sitting here and I just don't know what to do with them. Anyway, now that those dumb pieces from hell are also glued in with contact cement, I did some battle damage with my rotary tool. I primed the whole thing with white glue and sanded it a bit. It needs smoothing, especially in the beveled edges because they were sanded and are a bit rough. Then I masked the gem and applied a layer of black matte paint. And that's it, our Reg helmet is done. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like if you did, comment if you have any questions, subscribe for more content like this, and for whatever I'll be up to next, I hope to see you around. Bye!